সবাই কেমনচন ইউএস এমবেসি ঢাকা এবং দেশ টিভির বিশেষ আয়োজন আ কনভারসেশন উইথ বাংলাদেশ বাংলাদেশের সাথে হাড়ডা অনুষ্ঠানে আপনারা যারা আমাদের শো দেখেন তারা জানেন প্রতি মাসে আমরা একজন আমেরিকান গেস্টের সাথে আলোচনা করি বিভিন্ন গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ইস্যু নিয়ে আমাদের সাথে আজকে আড্ডা দিতে একজন স্পেশাল গেস্ট আছেন তানবীর সিদ্দিকী প্রেসিডেন্ট এন্ড ফাউন্ডার অফ চেঞ্জ মেকারস বাংলাদেশ ধন্যবাদ ধন্যবাদ আমাদের শোতে আসার জন্য আর বরাবরের মতো আছেন কিছু তরুণ প্যানেলিস্ট যারা রিপ্রেজেন্ট করছে বাংলাদেশ ইউথ এমপাওয়ারমেন্ট সোসাইটি বিএস অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমাদের শোতে আসার জন্য আমাদের আজকের আড্ডার টপিক নাগরিক নিরাপত্তা গণতন্ত্র এবং মানবাধিকার এ ব্যাপারে কথা বলতে আজকে যিনি আছেন তাকে ইউএস প্রেসিডেন্ট বারাক ওবামা সিলেক্ট করেছেন এই ইস্যুতে কাজ করার জন্য ইট ইজ মাই গ্রেট প্লেজার টু ওয়েলকাম Under Secretary for Civil and Security, Democracy and Human Rights, Ms. Maria Otero. Ms. Thank Otero, you. welcome to a conversation with Bangladesh. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Uh, it's great to have you here, and we are looking forward to this conversation. Uh, well, uh, what brings you to Bangladesh? Well, my uh, trip to Bangladesh, and I'm so delighted to be here. I've been here many times before. Uh, but being here representing President Obama, now re-elected, and uh, Secretary Clinton, uh, my visit is really a statement of the very important relationship between Bangladesh and the United States. Um, we have an excellent relationship as two countries, and we are working on many issues together to advance many different things that are of interest to both countries. Um, topics, for example, uh, I can think of um, disaster preparedness, uh, which is an issue that is so important in this country with the cyclones and with other types of uh, flooding and even thinking of an earthquake that could come. Issues related to uh, counterterrorism, which is such an important area uh, to address in this country, which we believe is also so important. Topics that have to do with uh, all the issues related to democracy, which are the values you hold and that we also hold. Uh, topics related to youth, which clearly in this country is particularly important, um, and also some topics that are related, for example, to, um, to police training so, uh, and to trafficking in persons. Many of these are topics that are, are under my responsibility in the Department of State, so I'm very pleased to be able to be here in this country that's uh, of such importance for us to be able to talk about this. Uh, that's really uh, fascinating, uh, but tell us more about your background. We hear that you are the highest ranking Hispanic official in the State Department and the first ever Latina Undersecretary. So how has your background affected your role as Undersecretary? Well, I am originally from Bolivia uh, in South America. Uh, sometimes you know Bolivia because they're very good soccer players, but uh, uh, I left Bolivia when I was young uh, with my family and uh, then was educated in the United States and became uh, a U.S. citizen. And I think very much this, uh, I consider myself a bicultural person. Um, my roots are in Spanish and in uh, Latin American tradition, um, but I am also uh, uh, an American from the United States. And I think that has given me more insight into how the, the rest of the world see the United States and also how to establish um, effective relationships. And I think as we see also in the election uh, that just took place in the United States, uh, that the Latinos are now an important part of uh, the... Um, of they played the, an important They played role. a very important role in um, the selection of the president. So um, from that perspective, it's a privilege to be able to represent the country at this level. And it's also a responsibility because there's so many Latinos and so many people that are minorities in the United States that are also seeking to play an important role and to have uh, a strong voice in the running of the country. So I'm, I'm very happy to be able to have this opportunity and then um, um, be able to help open the way. Thank you very much, Ms. Otero. And our guest here tonight, uh, Mr. Tanbir, uh, he has long experience of working on democracy and civic rights. So maybe, uh, Tanbir Bhai, you can share about your organization and the work you do with Changemakers. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a very uh, common and typical question to me. Uh, since uh, we established the organization Change Makers, uh, we started our program focusing on civic education. But this civic education concept generated in US, not here in Dhaka, in my program, in our program. Uh, in 2004, uh, under the IBLP program, I visited US and uh, the theme of the uh, trip was civic education in the US. And I had to visit lots of people, lots of organizations, and I found that uh, the civic education and the citizenship education is a core uh, in uh, Americans' life. And, and I had my uh, media background, I got my legal background, and it helped me to replicate that civic education, in other words, the citizenship education, and you can even call it uh, that civilian uh, security, human rights, uh, governance, and democracy. So these are the areas we are working with the young stars in Bangladesh, the future leaders, I mean the high school and college students. And university students. As, as well. you mentioned about the students, so we have a young panelist here, uh, uh, Bangladesh Youth Empowerment Society, and they are also working uh, on democracy and human rights with university students. Maybe you can share about your project. Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, this, our project is about empowering youth to strengthen democracy in our country. Uh, we were actually running the project with the grant provided by the U.S. Embassy, U.S. Uh, uh, State Department. It's uh, among 700 projects around the world, only 50 projects were chosen, and uh, only one project was chosen from Bangladesh, only one project from South Asia related to democracy and human rights. That was our project. Uh, actually, the journey started when, in 2008, uh, our President Shamim and I, Nabila, went to USA in a program called Study of U.S. Institutes for Student Leaders. Over there, uh, in the, it was not just a tour. It was uh, way more than that. We got to visit uh, many universities, many colleges. Not only that, we had classes on U.S. politics, U.S. history. Not only the positive sides, but also the negative sides were also shown to us. And we learned that USA is in today's position, but it was not always there. It went through many movements and revolutions and came to today's position. And we also had training, leadership training, uh, long leadership trainings hours after hours. And then we, had to, we got the chance to do community services. Those community services were really different from, different from our countries. I mean, those services are not practiced here. So that was a very short tour, but uh, a huge experiment, uh, experience we gathered. And using uh, that experience, we wanted to do something for our country. So we learned, Shamim and uh, I wanted to do something uh, to use that experience in our country. So we came up with BYES. And maybe Shamim, you can share about uh, the project. Uh, when we found our project, when we got our project, how we planned it, we are first having a research and we want to see how uh, the current scenario of uh, the uh, democratic practice in Bangladesh uh, actually being how the young people are uh, practicing the democracy in uh, university levels. After saying that, what we are planning, we will be selecting uh, 40 students from six different universities in Bangladesh and we will be giving them an extensive uh, leadership training. We are, after training, we will be making them ambassadors who will be disseminating the, uh, their rights, who will be disseminate, uh, and who will be training other, uh, their fellows, and they will be having dialogues in universities regarding democracy, human rights, and after that we will have a summit uh, at the end of our project. Actually, what we felt uh, for uh, how we came up with this idea of uh, giving leadership training to the university students, uh, our young people uh, in our during our independence uh, showed the best of their uh, upholded their potentials but uh, in very recent decades our young people actually uh, have been very apolitical they are not uh, becoming interested to talk on politics even so we want to inspire them we want to uh, award them regarding their rights regarding uh, their responsibilities and uh, our democratic uh, practices uh, we will talk about uh, the role of youth uh, on these issues later but, uh, but I'll g get back to Ms. Zotero uh, my question is what is civilian security and what is your role as undersecretary 
Um, that's a big question, and I, the, the issues that are being talked about are so interesting that I also want to talk about some of uh, what everyone has, uh, has discussed about democracy. Civilian security is um, the way of describing what it is that the United States can do to help governments protect their people. And by protect their people, we mean uh, all those areas that citizens in a country need to feel safe, to feel secure, uh, to feel that they have access to a just uh, system with justice, uh, that the rule of law in a country is being followed. So if you think about that, the topics that you've been talking about, democracy and human rights, are right in the middle of those factors that protect citizens. But so are also ways in which we can help, say, organize crime or trafficking in persons uh, uh, affect people's lives. So is the work that one needs to do in order to make sure that um, the police in a country protects and doesn't repress. Um, all the things that we have to do in order to make sure that uh, violent extremism doesn't uh, create instability. Um, all the things one has to do to work with youth. All of these areas, uh, including also when the people are displaced and you need to provide humanitarian assistance, these are all things that the U.S. government does through the Department of State. Uh, we have lots of resources to be able to do this work and uh, many, many people working in these areas. So Secretary Clinton has put all of these together in one area that is called civilian security. আড্ডা দিতে দিতে সময় হলো একটা বিরতির সাথেই থাকুন পিছে কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যেই দেখছেন আ কনভারসেশন উইথ বাংলাদেশ বাংলাদেশের সাথে আড্ডা অনুষ্ঠান আমাদের আজকের আড্ডা টপিক নাগরিক নিরাপত্তা গণতন্ত্র এবং মানবাধিকার সিভিলিয়ান সিকিউরিটি ইটস এ ব্রড এরিয়া সার্টেনলি এন্ড মাই কোশ্চেন ইজ টু ইউ দ্যাট হোয়াই ইট ইজ ক্রুশিয়াল ইন রিসেন্ট ডেজ ক্যান ইউ প্লিজ এলাবোরেট এনিওয়্যার দ্যাট ইউ দ্যাট ইউ লুক অ্যাট अराउंड দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড দ্য সিস্টেম দ্যাট মেকস শিওর দ্যাট পিপল লিভ আ ফুলার লাইফ এন্ড আ লাইফ উইথ দ্য গ্রেটেস্ট কোয়ালিটি is a, a democratic system, a system that respects the freedoms of individuals that are not values from America or values from the West. These are values that are in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. There are countries in Central America that I've been to, Honduras, Guatemala, they're very far away from here. But you see organized crime, especially yeah. drugs that again are undermining how countries are operating. In this country, in this part of the world, the issues may be different ones. So it is very important to be able to help maintain democracies and to be able to create an environment in which they can become stronger. Um, let me add something else because some of the things that you said earlier are so important when you talk about democracy is that a democracy is never really complete. It's never really finished. And yeah. so the fact that you were able to go to the United States, and I'm so happy that uh, you visited the United States, because I think if we visited each other's countries more, we would uh, be able to have a more peaceful world. Um, but you were able to see those parts of our own democracy that still need a lot of work and that we need to continue evolving and working. And this is also the case in Bangladesh. Uh, hearing all this, it is quite clear that there are a large number of uh, civilian security issues around the world. But I would like to hear from our panelists, uh, what do you think about the civilian security scenario in Bangladesh or any issues uh, you want to mention? Well, the civilian security condition in Bangladesh is not actually even. Uh, some parts of the country will see that it is practiced very well, and most of the other parts it's not that so. Uh, let's take, take an example of Dhaka city. 
if you consider the uh, street security, some of the private house, uh, housing societies are pretty well secured. Even no matter how late, you, late night it is, it's pretty secured. But many of the other parts of the Dhaka city, you will find missing news, rape cases, or maybe uh, kidnapping and other stuff, hijacking are going on. And this is also the case for the rest of the country as well. Some parts are pretty good, some parts are not that good. And uh, if we consider the gender discrimination part, uh, it's not very good, but it's not that bad either. We are hopeful that it's progressing. Take an example, like uh, um, many women are now participating in an uh, organization like ours, doing something to make change. And our organization like ours are actually trying their best to use the youth to do some imp improvement. So the condition I would not say is uh, uh, very good, but progress, I think uh, we are hopeful that progress will come because organizations are still working. I think civilian security is the concept perfect for developed countries, not for us, like our developing countries, country like Bangladesh. And my second question is, do you include the practicing civic culture through the civilian in your civilian society concept? It's my question. Um, on your first question, uh, the concept of civilian security is one that uh, we believe can be applied to any society, whether it's a developed country or a country that is developing, because the concept is to help that country put in place all the pieces it needs to have in place in order to be able to have um, a society and a democracy that is strong and a government that supports it. Now, that is not easy to do. Um, and in, many con in all countries that are pursuing a democratic system, you need to have uh, a good system of justice. You need to be able to have in place the rules, the laws that are going to be able to make sure that uh, the freedoms of expression, of assembly, um, of press, uh, of association, all these basic freedoms are respected. This, it doesn't matter if you're a developed country or a developing country. All of these things are absolutely important p ingredients of uh, a democracy um, being able to be in place. And so, um, but some countries have more of one thing or less of another. And so the idea is to be able to create, uh, to help governments be able to address these questions. You know, if you think uh, you've brought up the issue of women, for example, you, you know, this is an issue that exists in all countries. In all countries, women need to be empowered. In some countries, more than in others. Uh, in all countries, including the United States, women get paid less for what they do than men. Women are less represented in, in uh, political bodies and in political parties. This is, so, and, and women uh, economically have less opportunities than men. I mean, we can give more examples also in education and other things. Um, this is something that we can't uh, say, oh, it's good to empower women under these conditions and not under these. Women have to be empowered in every country. To be very honest, developing countries like Bangladesh, the human security or the civilian security is more important than the developed countries. Because of their social security and others, they have got certain things. From our experience, we can uh, say that, that through change makers, what we are doing, that we are trying to uh, educate our young citizens about their uh, human security, about their uh, uh, civilian security. Unless I protect my security, I cannot establish, I cannot participate in a democracy. And as uh, Ms. Otero said, it involves lots of things, including the fundamental rights, it involves the uh, human rights, uh, citizenship uh, rights and so many things and the institutions created by the government to protect the uh, uh, citizens and how they are functioning, everything involved. So uh, it is a crucial issue for developing countries like Bangladesh. Uh, Ms. Otero, I'll get back to you. Your portfolio uh, also includes human rights and democracy. So how can the United States and the other nation can work together to develop and strengthen rule of law 
and promote uh, uh, human rights around the world? This is, I think, one of our major objectives. We do believe, as I said earlier, that when each individual's human rights are protected uh, and they're able to exercise them freely, um, their lives have greater quality and that translates into societies that are also richer and of greater quality. Um, this is our belief and this is really the fundamental belief of uh, a democratic system. This is one of the values that is so central to that way of thinking. So a lot of the work that we do through the Department of State is to help uh, help countries improve their own ability to be stronger democracies and to protect the, uh, the human rights of their individuals uh, or of their citizens. Now that takes many different forms. There's, you know, we were just talking about elections. Elections is the first step. You know, once you have an election, once you've registered everybody to vote, everybody has gone and voted, uh, then that's when the fun begins. We do a great deal of work with uh, civil society. Uh, we have ways to provide grants to them. We have ways to do exchange programs, as has happened. I think we have one example of an organization that may have received some funding in order to get started. Um, we even, in countries that, are, that have repressive governments or where human rights defenders are threatened, uh, or whose lives are in danger, we have the ability to help them with just in 24 hours to just be able to have some resources to put themselves in a safe place or to engage themselves in a different way. Almost 75% of the people of our country live under 40. But the important thing is nowadays the youth don't want to be a politician. They just want to be a doctor or an, an, an engineer. But we BES believe that youth participation is very necessary regarding the, uh, to change the current democratic scenario in our country. My question to you is how the youth of Bangladesh can work with uh, youth of other countries to develop the rule of law and uh, universal human rights? That's a very good question because um, I think in this country, 60% of the population is younger than 25. Amazing. Uh, but if you go around the world, you will find a figure that is quite similar. So we have really in the majority of countries that are developing, the wide majority of people are young people. And the needs of young people um, if we look at the majority, many of them lack education, many of them lack training, they don't have contacts, uh, they can't find a job, um, and lack of employment opportunity becomes one of the most important thing that they face. In many cases, all of you know that you are privileged in uh, Bangladesh. You know that you have education, uh, you have been outside of the country, you can interpret other realities for people in this, for youth in this country. So when we talk about young people, one of the first things that I think is very important to remember is that the majority of young people need educational and economic opportunities. One of the ways to be able to help young people participate is to help organize them around different issues. You have organized yourselves around civic participation. I've seen in other countries young people be organized to fight off violence in their countries. I've seen in other countries young people organized to overcome ethnic differences that are creating conflict and, and difficulties. I've seen young people organize uh, to be interfaith, especially in large Muslim countries where they realize that religion can be a source of bringing people together instead of splitting them apart and the youth then organize in order to be able to put those issues forward and help young people address them.
বিরতি আরো একবার আ কনভারসেশন উইথ বাংলাদেশ বাংলাদেশের সাথে আড্ডা অনুষ্ঠানে আমাদের সাথেই থাকুন বিরতির পর আবারো স্বাগত বাংলাদেশের সাথে আড্ডা অনুষ্ঠানে আড্ডা দিচ্ছি আন্ডার সেক্রেটারি মারিয়া ওটেরোর সাথে I would like to add before going to next question one thing that you as we are working with them actually they don't know where to go whom to ask and how to establish their rights that's the main problem because the state in some uh, cases the state don't want to educate them about their rights because of unknown reason but they need to educate themselves about their rights and, and as well as the responsibilities that civic edu engagement or civic education or citizenship education which will eventually ensure that uh, civilian security. Absolutely and for that organizations like uh, BYES uh, they should come forward and uh, educate the youth about uh, democratic practices and human rights. Why I'm telling this? Because of our experience, because we, we organize a, a series of uh, uh, sessions for the students. And in most cases, what we learned that that sort of uh, session was the ever first in their education institution. Because of that interaction, because of the content uh, materials we provided, uh, the discussion uh, we arranged and the interactive sessions, question answer sessions. And through that process, even the uh, teachers or the principals or the head of the institutions uh, in return uh, told us that it was the ever first. And they asked me, when you will come back to our uh, institution? And in this relation, I'd like to ask you a question with the uh, civilian society and the relationship between uh, economic development as well as uh, education. May I add that uh, we, uh, we know that prior joining to the State Department, you have a, a background of working on economic development. That's right. So maybe That's right. you can tell us about yes, that experience certainly. as well. Yes, certainly. You're reminding me that um, before I was under secretary, I worked for many years in this area of microfinance, which is the area that tries to provide loans to very low-income people that need to start their own businesses. Uh, that as a way for them, because they have no education, they have no skills, as a way for them to earn some income for their family. And this we find is the one way in which some of the poor segments, especially women, can earn some income and can, uh, can improve their own economic uh, opportunity and the organization that I headed called Acción International worked, uh, works now in uh, almost 30 countries around the world and has probably more than six million people that it is making loans to um, and I also had the real honor to be on the board of BRAC here BRAC and BRAC has a board that is an international and, uh, board. This was in? This was right before I became uh, undersecretary uh, four years ago. So I, uh, I admire very much uh, Sir Abed, Fasal Abed, who started BRAC and who has done such important work. And uh, we also were able to learn a lot from the experience uh, that uh, BRAC has not only in Bangladesh but in many other countries also in uh, uh, certainly in the Middle East and in Africa. So all these are pieces that are very much connected to uh, people's ability to practice their rights um, because we just as you said um, the poor uh, a person is the more difficult it is for them to know what rights they have uh, that they can play out and that they can use. Um, and as you give economic opportunity and you create uh, and you address economic development, uh, you also can increase uh, the issue of education as well. And so all of these topics are very much interrelated. In countries uh, that uh, we have seen the real relationship between increasing women's education and their ability to also become more active citizens in their own societies. So education becomes perhaps um, 
one of the strongest empowerment tools that we see across the world and our efforts to provide uh, education opportunities for young girls um, and to ensure that they're able to finish into the secondary years, what we call high school, is again one way to really advance this area. Biroti Aro Akbar, a conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh is a third donustani. Pirboki Chukunamote. Shabai Kabar Ramantron, a conversation with Bangladesh, Bangladesh is a third donustani. So uh, it is clear that economic development ties into furthering democratic practices and human rights issues. Uh, but my question uh, to the panelists would be how do you uh, involve people from every income level, not only university students? You are working with youth, but there are youth who, who need to know about their rights, uh, their human rights, and uh, know more about civilian security. My question to our, uh, our uh, guest that do U.S. State Department has any plan to empower the young people in uh, promoting youth entrepreneurship, especially social entrepreneurship, to bringing change? Uh, the exchange programs that you participated in turned you into stronger uh, social entrepreneurs because then you received your ideas and you came back. And you know that... Um, the work that you are doing doesn't just require money. It requires the ability to put your very good brains together. Uh, it requires the ability to be organized. And it does require some resources. But I would emphasize that all we did was invite you to our country so that you could uh, visit our universities, visit other cities, but that sparked in you new opportunities. So uh, we will continue to do that. We have quite a number of programs uh, and, and opportunities to be able to continue supporting uh, youth in this country and in many other countries. Um, but I also give you the challenge of saying that um, um, what are the situations that you need to put other youth in so that innovation can also come from them? Um, how can you challenge them to be able to carry those opportunities out? Um, maybe they don't all need to travel to other countries outside of Bangladesh, but maybe you can do some things here in Bangladesh that could help empower more and more young people to have that we call it that multiplier effect, you know, to be able to carry out that role. If I add on, 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 your, on your points, in Bangladesh, uh, uh, I would say that in South Asia, our Bangladeshi young people are the most vibrant one. They have sh already shown uh, through different initiatives and they are now, uh, from, from the very beginning to till now, they are like sh eagerly, very eagerly showing their interest to join and bringing new ideas and when we are coming with uh, coming with the programs they are just joining us and they are bringing out with their new ideas and they are telling us how just this is a very good opportunity for us because our our people are just not having the opportunity uh, thank you shamim uh, you, you rightly pointed out that the youth are looking for opportunities to get engaged uh, maybe uh, final thoughts from nabila um, youth are looking opportunities for getting engaged and uh, many organizations like ours are doing a lot to collect those uh, youths to do something like uh, we are uh, not only doing a program in Dhaka, we are decentralizing it. We are doing programs all over the country. This is how we are engaging more youth. We have some future program for social entrepreneurship where we would like to involve youth from uh, uh, the below poverty line people uh, so that we can engage them and we are planning for not sh not only short term but some programs that will have long term effect and uh, to um, uh, miss uh, uh, otero's um, uh, to add something to Ms. Otero's comment is that being a state alumni, not only in designing in our program, not only the state alumni of the Bangladeshis are involved, we even get help from the state alumni from outside through the state alumni network. They help us to design a program and make it better. 
So uh, those exchange programs are really good for organizations uh, like you ours. Become a, uh, you become part of a global network. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, panelists. Uh, unfortunately, we are at the end of our ADDA, the conversation. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Tanvir Bhai, thank you very much. Any final thoughts? The final thoughts is uh, the youth needs to discover themselves. The power they have got, they need to, uh, I mean, expose it. And that could be done through volunteerism. Uh, through creative works, uh, through community works, and got involved uh, with different initiatives, uh, I mean, social services, in addition to their regular uh, study and other things, the community work and others, which is uh, quite missing from our youths. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks again for participating. Uh, Ms. Otero, as we say that our show is a conversation with Bangladesh, and Bangladesh... Uh, our majority of the population uh, are youth, so any message uh, for the youth of Bangladesh? Well, first of all, it's so wonderful to be able to have this conversation with the youth of Bangladesh. Um, and I would say that the final thought uh, relates to what you have just said. Sometimes people think that um, you, are the, you who are here are the only change agents in the country, and yet I believe that every young person um, can change their country, can play uh, an active and decisive role in changing things that they believe can be different. If given the opportunity to be able to, to do that, then um, all of them can play that role, can assume that responsibility. And so your role, as you already understand that, is to be able to really speak to the youth in Bangladesh and, uh, and, and incentivize and motivate them so that they can see that changing their society, changing their country is um, not only a responsibility but also a privilege and that they live in a society where they can make a contribution to improving their democracy and to safeguarding it. And this is one of the most important messages that I would leave with you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Otero. It was a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you. It's wonderful uh, to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.